Hello, my geeks and peeps. This is the sultry sound of Rebecca Parham, and welcome to another episode of Firebug Chats. A lot of you liked the Q&A video I did a while back, and I thought it would be fun to do it again and give more opportunities for my little oodalalis to have their questions answered. So let's get the pebbles out of our shoes and get going. Favorite Owl House character and which Owl House character do you relate to the most? Answer to both of these questions is probably Ida, Ida Clawthorn, the Owl Lady. Uh, and I even dressed up for her as Halloween, that's how strongly I feel about that. What was the first car you drove? Escape! If you theoretically switched to a different type of content on YouTube, what would you do? So a lot of you would immediately think music, but the problem is is that I am not a good enough musician to make music my, like realistically make music my long time career. Because I can't compose music. I have no like brain for music theory. I play no instruments. I am just a good vocalist. That's pretty much it. So if I were to realistically say, oh, animation's not working out, I've got to shift gears immediately and try to work this all out, I don't think I would pick music. What I think I would honestly go for is like, I could see myself being a really good video essayist, or I think I would probably be into edutainment. I just really like geeking out about random things and sharing that knowledge with people who want that knowledge. So I think I'd be a really good educator on YouTube or a really good video essayist. Have you ever thought about talking more about your daycare stories? <laughs> That's the next video. Have you ever considered living abroad or in a different state from where you currently live, either permanently or as a change of pace? In America, Los Angeles, internationally, probably London. Do you ever plan to make your own story or world like a comic or a book? This by far was the most popular question I got in the comments this time around. And I mean, yeah, I do have ideas and general concepts that I believe would make amazing TV series or, or movies. And I think it's just a case of, it takes a lot of time and energy and money to sit down and actually like flesh those things out to make a pitch bible to sell to the major studios. I think James did a phenomenal job of documenting the process of how he got his Netflix series going. And as you can see, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of rejection, it's it's a lot of just constantly grinding to try and get your get your idea out there. And I think it's just a case of I don't have the time in my schedule right now to make that happen, but that's not to say that I don't ever want to actually like flesh out an idea and have it on Netflix or Disney or, or whoever is going to give me the most creative freedom, let's be honest. So yeah, to answer your question, like I have the desire to, it's just a matter of timing. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? The Ben and Jerry's The Tonight Dough, which is the Jimmy Fallon flavor. Hear this out, caramel and chocolate ice creams with chocolate cookie swirls and gobs of chocolate chip cookie dough and peanut butter cookie dough. That's everything that I love in one ice cream. What was your reaction to the finale of Amphibia? It made me cry. Has there ever been a time when a fan met you and did something crazy to be in a video? I know if I say this out loud, it's gonna mean that somebody's gonna do something at the next VidCon or the next convention that I'm at, but honestly, no, like no one really is disruptive in this community. When you guys meet me in person, you guys are so polite and considerate. Yeah, you're excited, enthusiastic, passionate. Um, some of you are shy, some of you are confident. It just, you know, it's a whole bunch of different people who come to meet me, but I would never ever say that my audience is disruptive. None of you as individuals have ever done anything like that for the purpose of just getting attention. So which DreamWorks villain slash antagonist would you let hold your drink? That little old lady from Madagascar. What's your comfort food? Basically anything with pasta. What's a video of yours that when you rewatch it, you either cringe or get embarrassed? Oh, I would say any of my old videos where I appeared on camera. And not because what I was saying was untrue. It was mostly just the way I was acting on camera. Like I really had no clue how to present myself as a vlogger. So I was just basically ripping off like, early 2010s vloggers that that I grew up with that I really liked and so like the person in those videos it doesn't feel like me it feels very forced and cheesy at times and just a little fake at times even though like I said like what I was saying in a lot of those early videos was true it was just not me saying it and these days I am way more comfortable with my voice and with who I am and appearing on camera. So like I would act entirely different on camera these days. 
And I just, I can't watch those old videos. They just, they make me really, really cringe. You had to make a board game, what would it be about? I actually did make a board game for a class at Ringling. The objective was we had to do toys, and so I just, I made a board game for my toy, and it was a board game about musical trivia, like Broadway trivia. And, you know, sometimes you would have to answer questions, like answer actual trivia questions, and sometimes you would have to get up and actually, like, sing a song from a very specific musical and so like it tested not only your knowledge of musicals but your ability to actually like perform the musicals and i got a lot of like really high grades for that one like really really great remarks for that so you know maybe one day i'll actually make that happen what is your generic coffee order i can't have coffee anymore like this developed this year i have developed like an intolerance to caffeine. It caused really bad acid reflux problems at night where I would wake up drowning in my own stomach acid. Like, think about that for a sec. I'm still adjusting to it. I'm so tired, my vital life hack is gone. What's your favorite vegetable? Sweet peas. What video game did you play the most in 2022? Minecraft. What's your opinion on the LGBTQIA community and are you a part of it? They are my geeks, my peeps, my little oodalallies. Love them, support them, will fight for them, punch many throats in defense of them. That's a joke, borderline, depending on the circumstance. And to answer the question if I'm actually a part of the community, well, I've learned a lot about myself in the past few years. I've had a lot of new experiences and I can pretty much definitively say that Yes, I am part of the LGBTQIA community. However, I don't feel quite ready to elaborate further on how I fit into this community. I still need to figure some things out and kind of do some more soul searching and so on and so forth. But ultimately, yeah, this is my community. What's your favorite color? Purple. What's your favorite musical? So I used to not be able to answer this question, but right now it is totally Beetlejuice. Have you ever been in a car accident? I have. I've been in a few fender benders that weren't that big of a deal, but this one big crash that I was in, it banged me up pretty good. So I was in the passenger seat, I wasn't driving, and I'm not going to say who was driving. But we were driving along this road that runs directly west to east, so at a certain time of day, the sun is just going to very blaringly be in your eyes as you're driving. So we needed to make a turn, there was no stop sign, there was no stoplight, uh, no turning lane even, it was just like, oh, good luck! The driver couldn't see, we turned right into an oncoming car, and it hit me on my side. Thankfully I was looking down at my phone so I didn't see it, otherwise I might have been even more traumatized, but I walked away from that crash, and like 24 hours later I started developing all of these enormous bruises all over my body. I even had a black eye from where like the airbag hit me in the face and pushed my glasses into my face. And I went back to Ringling and my sternum hurt so bad that I couldn't even sit in front of the computer and work. I thought I had broken it, I went to the hospital a couple days later because no no pain medication that I could get over the counter was like helping and I got the x-ray and they said oh it's just severely bruised and then they gave me like three days worth of the good stuff but yeah that's really the only car accident I've ever been in that's you know a big deal I demand to know your favorite cheese okay geez all right Irish cheddar what is your zodiac sign Sagittarius but I do not believe in astrology whatsoever what's your favorite quote of all time any quote that has stuck with you particularly I don't know if this is my favorite quote, but it's definitely been one of the most influential in my entire life. In the early 2010s, when the YouTube renaissance was kind of starting to kick off, there was a quote that was being passed around a handful of, of vloggers that I watched, and it was this. Be the person you needed when you were a kid. And it was particularly meaningful to me because from middle school onward, I was looking for that person. Someone who thought like me, who, who liked the same things as me, who looked like me. Someone who is strong and independent, intelligent, someone who is creative and, and fun, someone who is empathetic and kind. I was looking for that person in celebrities, in, in my cartoons, in all the media that I consumed. And I didn't quite see that representation in the media that I grew up on. And I thought to myself in adulthood, I said, if I was searching for that person when I was in middle school and high school, then there's got to be some kids out there that need that person in their lives too. So that I guess would be the mission statement for my channel. Make the stuff that middle school and high school Becca would have loved to see, would have loved to consume, would have gotten excited about, and say the things that they needed to hear. Will you marry me? 
Oh, darling, I simply cannot. We would make each other miserable, you and I. And besides, I'm married to my work. You're far better off without me. Which do you love most, apples or bananas? I'm actually allergic to bananas, so I gotta say apples because I don't want the itchy throat. Since you've talked about some of your worst teachers, who were some of the best? So I'll give you two of them from Ringling. One of them was a professor over at the Business of Art and Design department, because I got my minor in Business of Art and Design. And she used to work for Disney in the theme park department. And she brought like a Disney level of joy and enthusiasm to everything. And she was excellent at managing people. She was excellent at managing her students. She made every single assignment fun and interesting. And I also actually wrote her an email. I sent her the story about what happened with E in the hallway the day it happened. And she read it and she gave me guidance on the next step, like what to do now that this incident has happened. And she gave me the courage and confidence to go take the incident to the head of the department. And then there was my traditional animation teacher because we had 2D classes. We had the whole, the light boards and flipping papers and everything. And this woman was like a very soft-spoken, cheerful grandmother kind of woman. And she would just be so approachable and so kind and considerate. And she was impressed with anything that her, her kids and her students did. She, you know, she was always so impressed that I was doing the opera singing for my thesis. So every single full faculty critique she was in, she always had to make a comment about it. She's just like, I just think it's so wonderful that you're doing the singing for your thesis. And it was just like this little ray of sunshine in the darkness. So I will always remember her as being the sweetest teacher I've, I've ever had. Did you ever get into arguments with Rachel when you were kids? Were there full-on fights too? Oh yeah, Rachel and I had a period in our siblinghood where we were not very nice to each other. She was just very, very angry. She was a very angry, angsty teenager for a long time. She would shut herself in her room and very rarely come out. And when she did come out and we would pass each other in the hallway, she would just say something mean and nasty to me. And trust me, this is all water under the bridge now. And I was just a very, very sad little middle schooler, high schooler, and just knew that I couldn't really talk to her about anything. <laughs> and I do remember at least one circumstance where we did have a bit of a um, punching contest. And the thing is, is I don't even remember what we were fighting about. Hormones! Whatever happened to the N64 you bought with your mom's stolen credit card? Here it is! If you had to play a horror game, what would it be? Listen, I already play Minecraft and that's enough spooks for me. I get jump scared all the time in Minecraft. Something sneaks up on me or I hear that and I'm like, no! Nah! What's your favorite thing about your treehouse? Probably the fact that it plays to that old cartoon rule of being much bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. It means that there are so many new and interesting things to explore and discover in this treehouse and I can't wait to keep adding more rooms. What is your biggest pet peeve? Okay, seriously, this makes me unrealistically angry at times. Like, I almost threw out one of my college roommates because she did this. But I can't stand it when someone uses a dish towel, you know, the thing that you use to dry your clean dishes, the, the, the things you eat off of. Yeah, I cannot stand it when someone takes a clean dish towel and uses it to clean up a spill. Or, like, on the floor or on the counter, I don't care what it is, but, like, why are you doing that? These are expensive dish towels that are meant for for drying something that is already clean and you are dirtying it up. Yeah, I know you could throw it in the laundry and everything like that, but it doesn't always immediately get thrown in the laundry. Sometimes people are like, oh, I'm just gonna clean up this grape juice spill and then it'll sit on the counter and it won't be noticed until I'm halfway drying dishes. I see, I'm getting like unrealistically angry about this. <laughs> Do you have any more musical theater dream roles, regardless of age or gender, besides the ones you mentioned in your 2019 Q&A video? Beetlejuice. Let me play Beetlejuice. I want to be hopping around the stage making inappropriate jokes, and, you know, opening my head to show my brain. I, I want to be the ghost with the most. Please, I want to ride a sandworm. I want to be Beetlejuice. Hashtag Rebecca should be Beetlejuice. Let's send it to Alex Brightman. No, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> What is your stance on Canadians? Jerks. All of them. They're all jerks. They're so loud and obnoxious and they waddle around like they own the place and they honk at you when you don't give them bread. We're still talking about geese, right? 
What do you do when you feel like scrapping an animation even though you've made it so far? I think it entirely depends on how far along in the process the video is, because if we're just at script phase and like concept development phase where I've like sketched out the backgrounds, maybe I've even like boarded, like done some thumbnails for the boards of a certain part, and nothing too heavy has happened in the production process, then I will probably feel more confident to scrap it at that point. But if I'm like two thirds of the way through the video and I am like, I don't know if this is working or, or something about it is just bugging me, I think I make an effort to fix it more than just scrap the whole thing. Like I, I generally have an idea of what might not be working. So I just kind of like try to workshop ways to fix whatever part is bothering me. It just kind of becomes a puzzle of like, okay, how can I keep all of these backgrounds in the costume and keep this portion of the animation, but change the ending or change whatever part I haven't worked on yet so it fixes everything. I've only had to scrap videos in production twice now, and both times it was at a point where it was easy to scrap it, like at, at script phase. So yeah, there we are. <laughs> You said Jurassic Park is your favorite movie, so who's your favorite character? The T-Rex! Which outfit is the hardest to animate, and could you draw yourself in a gothic cottagecore dress? Anything with too much detail is always the hardest thing to animate, but mostly just time consuming. So yes, a gothic cottagecore dress would be far too much detail to animate in a timely manner, but here you go anyway. What's something you hope to improve about yourself in the coming year? I would say it's probably keeping a better work-life balance, because I began this career really almost being proud of how much work I did, like how much I didn't have a life outside of this job. And the thing is, is that in this industry, yes, it is important to have a period of time where you sprint, where you just put in such amazingly long hours because you are climbing the ladder and you're establishing yourself in this industry. And I'm never going to disparage the fact that I sprinted for a very, very long time. But it also means that a lot of my younger years, I didn't go out and do things. I didn't have like crazy parties or friends to, to, to hang out with. I mean, you know, I didn't, I didn't have any prospects in dating. And so I just kind of told myself, especially when 2020 hit and the pandemic struck and everything, I told myself I need to get my life back. <laughs> now that I am an established animator, I'm an established professional, and I'm, I'm doing okay for myself, I need to be able to find a balance between, you know, actually doing this job, which is already very super labor intensive, but, but also like actually going out on Saturday nights and, and trying to make new friends because, you know, I don't have a lot of them in Texas here. But other than that, I think it's just trying to be a human again instead of an eat, sleep, work machine. What kind of music do you listen to when you are stressed? So I have a record player in my office and whenever I'm stressed, I like to listen to my vinyl collection. And I'm very particular about what kind of albums I get on vinyl. Cause to me, I can't play anything modern on vinyl. I have to, it has to sound like it, it, it belongs on a vinyl record. So that's like modern stuff that sounds old, like over the garden wall or actually old stuff like you know, the Beatles or, or uh, Bing Crosby or the Andrews sisters. And I don't know what it is about playing vinyl records, but it just feels so comforting and warm. And if I just like pop on the Over the Garden Wall album and have a cup of tea or hot cocoa and just wrap myself up in a blanket and just kind of center myself, that is the most cozy, loving, warm feeling ever. Pie? Uh, I think I'm good. Why must I listen to your demands? Because if you don't, I'm gonna steal all the marshmallows out of your lucky charms and leave you with nothing but the dry cat food looking stuff. If you were ever in a zombie apocalypse, which four fictional characters would you recruit for your team? Ooh, you're gonna be starting things in the comments with this one. There are gonna be so many fights. But here we go. Dumbledore, Captain Marvel, Tony Stark, Kratos. So that should just about do it, my little oodalallies. I really hope this was informative, and if you want me to do more stuff like this, then let me know, or let me know what you want me to talk about in general. Really appreciate you guys over here on my second channel. It kind of feels like the uber fans or the super supportive fans coming in here and checking in on me, and I really appreciate that. You're all the best. So thank you so much for tuning in, but now I gotta tune out. Bye! <laughs> I got the peppermint in my mouth. Oh no. Well.
Ugh, gross. That is so gross. It does not taste like peppermint. Pleh, pleh, pleh. Pleh. Like, I got, like, no, I need tissues. I gotta spit this out. Ah. No, oh, that's so nasty. <laughs> Okay, for those of you who don't know, I put peppermint under my nose to kind of clear out my sinuses. It helps with voice acting. And, oh my god, like, I, I rubbed it underneath my nose and I accidentally got some too close to my lips. And I, I got some in my mouth and it's so gross. It does not taste like peppermint. 